Oh my god, Nancy! I remember you! I do! It was so <laughs> okay. Testing. I don't know how this works. Do you know how? Hi, Simon. Oh, really? 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 Oh, as I was digging more and more and more, it's like, then I started started realizing the similarities of the old and the new, right? Mm -hmm. so. Very much so. And I love the way you juxtapose the new in here with the street signs. Yeah, things that we're familiar exactly. with, religious text, you know. Stay the blazes home, stuff like that. Those are just from uh, uh, belly dancing. My mom had a belly dancing. Works in the cancer center, and so she's here. I'm just so grateful. I just wanted to say a few things to you. Okay. Um, this is a very exciting time with this new body of work that Maria's worked really, really, really hard on. It has not been um, an easy journey by any means, and um, I just want you to know how much you inspire me every day by your resiliency, your courage, your strength, your love of humanity, your creativity, your laugh and your smile. <laughs> When I think of Maria, I think of the words of social um, justice activist Brian Stevenson. And he said, in order to make the world a better place, we need to get proximate. We need to get close to the problem. We need to change the narrative. We need to feel uncomfortable and we need to stay hopeful. And when I think of Maria, my sister, when I think of Maritime Senorita, and I think of this body of work in particular, it does all those things. So, this is not about me. This is about Maria. So I'm going to pass it on to her. Thank you so much. Um, if you can go and get the little the write-up thing next to my resume. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Oh, I need my glasses. Um, Lisa, I need some glasses, yeah, and here. Okay. You have to find. I need to find <laughs> underneath my raincoat. Okay. First of all, I want to say thank you so much to everybody to come here today because um, when I was at home, I was thinking, oh no, I don't know if anyone's going to come. <laughs> and, and now you all came. And so, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you so much because um, it gives me an incredible sense of hope and encouragement <clears throat> to see all your beautiful faces. And um, I did this work specifically because I wanted to be able to give back to my community. It's my legacy, and um, I wanted to um, do everything I could to uh, bring attention and awareness to things that are happening around us. And uh, my work has always been about the human fragility of, you know, what we experience, um, life, death, birth, um, these types of things. You know, easy subjects to deal with. <laughs> I like to challenge myself, so I've spent a long time learning various um, mediums, you know, like oil painting and stuff like that, needlepoint, and um, sculptural pieces, those type of things, um, quietly in my studio, um, you know, and also working, you know, full time at the hospital. So this whole idea came about um, when I was working in the hospital um, as a housekeeper, my full time job, um, and I, was, and I was told to go and work in emergency department, so I did, because I left the veterans to go and work in the emergency department. And then all of a sudden, COVID hit. And um, 
I saw so many people in the emergency department, you know, really struggling. Um, you know, various mental health, um, domestic addictions, um, uh, COVID. And we all have a story about COVID. So anyway, I looked it up one day on my coffee on a coffee break, the whole word plague, because I really didn't know what was going on. All I knew is I had to go and clean those those rooms in the emergency department. I'm so grateful for that job because it really humbled me and made me realize a lot of um, how important it is um, uh, to understand, you know, where we're all coming from. Um, I looked into the plague and then, you know, COVID, the plague, that was the beginning. Um, and then I was starting to look at, you know, various other things, you know, like how how our, how our situation is starting to kind of fall apart. You know, the fall of the empire is, is kind of like the fall of the, the middle class in a sense of what we know. So it is rather fascinating to me, even though it is very, you know, um, difficult. Um, and then, of course, climate change. Uh, in the medieval ages, they had an ice age. They had a little mini ice age. So, and uh, I'm smiling at my daughter. <laughs> I just want to give her a lot of love. I'm so happy you came here. Thank you, Sophia. Um, you know, so they had the, the Ice Age in the medieval ages, and then I thought, oh my God, we have climate change. There you go. There's one painting, you know. So the famine really comes about um, the idea of how when we, we, we all are fed, you know, by seeds. You know, we have seeds. And so, you know, if we don't have seeds, we can't grow any food, or we have climate issues, we can't grow food. So celestial hunger is kind of a juxtaposition between mortality, where we all become, you know, into the cosmos, we become these particles. We never really die, you know? And I feel a sense of comfort in that, knowing that, you know, we're all gonna continue on, even if we do die, you know what I mean? Like, so that gives me a sense of hope that ideology. The seeds. Yeah, the seeds. So, because people are collecting seeds, right? There's seed banks and stuff like that in, in the world. And so I thought, well, you know, they were having struggles with the famine because of climate change and different types of things. And is that they were all kind of in a situation now where sometimes, you know, um, due to inflation and because of COVID, you know, some of us are not always necessarily getting fed as we used to get fed or able to purchase the things that we were able to purchase before in order to feed ourselves. So, you know, um, I was, it wasn't hard for me to, to kind of pull from various things around me in my own community, but also globally as well, because as a Canadian, it's really important for us to um, understand how lucky we are. We are very, very lucky in this country. Um, and I always love the Four Seasons of Canada because we have a unique thing here. Um, we have the fall. So each painting is a season. Um, the climate change is um, the aftermath in the fall of like when you go and have a hurricane. Let's say, oh my God, there's all these um, containers floating in Point Pleasant Park, you know, in the harbor. So. That's imagination, that is. Um, <laughs> so then I thought, well, what happens with a storm? You feel like overwhelmed in a storm. You feel overwhelmed when you get diagnosed with terminal cancer, right? And so there's nothing more beautiful that early morning sun comes up from a storm. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to capture that in that particular painting. And then, of course, um, you know, the fall of the empire of fake news, and that's a bit of a heavy painting over there, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, summertime is just there when I was working at the plague, because I noticed the flowers, the lupins, um, at the hospital, right? And so there was a, a garden at the hospital at the QB2 where I used to work. And the famine over there, that is, um, that is May, that's spring, because of the daffodils, the daffodil park where my, my daughter and I um, we go and hang out Mother's Day of last year. One of the great things about social media is that you can find a place to have a chat room, you know? You're never alone, right? So um, it's a really great 
um, situation to have a sense of community, so I've gained a lot of new friends. Went roller skating with and broke my arm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah.